Next, we have Dr. Vivian Schneidman, a forensic psychiatrist. I always wanted to be a writer. I told my parents I was going to be a writer when I was about nine years old. I helped my mother write her essay to apply to medical school. I wrote some fiction books. I created a fictional forensic psychiatrist named Tamsin Bain. I started thinking about writing Forensic Psychiatry, A Lawyer's Guide, when I realized that so many lawyers and judges, so many parts of the legal system rely on psychiatric expertise. In almost any area of law, there is the possibility of encountering an individual who has some kind of psychiatric issue. And the law sees everybody as the same. The law is written to understand that everybody has a choice between behaving correctly and behaving incorrectly. So psychiatrists operate in the middle, in the gray. We understand that sometimes behavior isn't exactly a choice. Sometimes there's other issues at work. People have mental illness. People have other kinds of influences on them. And we can explain what actually happened in that gray area. So whenever there is any kind of question about somebody's behavior that looks weird, we can help the, the lawyers and the judges understand what happened there. So let's say, let's take a simple case like a custody case because you know well, courts are, are full of cases involving child custody. And a lot of times these cases are very, very um, adversarial and there's a lot of animosity. The standard for deciding child custody in every single state is the best interest of the children. But we see, we all know we don't have to have been involved in this ourselves to know about the acrimonious divorce, the child custody disputes we hear about in the news, we see it among our friends and our neighbors. So when you bring in a psychiatric expert, we can help to understand what's really going on there. Are there mental health issues? Have mental health issues arisen as a result of the breakup of this family and how can we best understand and then negotiate a good a good outcome for this family and does there need to be some psychiatric treatment for somebody in this family what would that psychiatric treatment look like has the stress of this family's breaking up resulted in some kind of mental health problem? Was there a mental health problem there to begin with? Did that lead to the breakup of the family? I see that all the time. You know, the courts assume that people have come to these decisions in a rational way because that's what the, that's the basis of our legal system is that people make rational choices. But in reality, we understand as, as psychiatric professionals that not all choices are rational. So we can help explain that to the courts. So we need to look at treatable disorders versus permanent disorders. And one way to conceptualize that is, is this a psychiatric disorder or is this brain damage? Has the brain been damaged? And if it's been damaged, is it gonna get better? Psychiatric disorders can often respond to treatment. So one of the ways that we can conceptualize psychiatric disorders or brain disorders is whether or not they can get better. Drugs are a huge topic. They don't just need their own book. They need their, whole, their own whole library. In my book, I have one chapter on drugs, and that is to say that they are a huge topic, and they can't be covered in one chapter but we use a lot of drugs in the form of medication to treat psychiatric disorders. And then we also encounter a lot of drugs in the form of abuse drugs when we treat patients. And it's very unfortunate that there is such a thing as drug abuse, but there is. It's very important to understand that the interplay between drugs and the brain changes the brain. There's changes on a histological level, which means on the level of the cells in the brain, that these cells change. And these changes are not well understood. So 
that is a huge area that we have to study. We, meaning the people that do the studies, I don't do that. I just work with the patients. But we need to understand that we can't just tell people don't use drugs and expect the legal system to change or the entire field of psychiatry to change. This is one of the most important messages in my book and I think one of the most important messages that we have to listen to every day. And we have to be aware that even though we can use medications very effectively to treat people and get them better, we also have to be very aware of the fact that people are out there in the world using drugs of abuse, treating themselves, getting into trouble, destroying their lives, and we have to be able to help them somehow. I'd be happy to talk to your group about my book or about forensic psychiatry. Please get in touch with my office if you'd like to get on my calendar.